this video, we'll look at the last few verses in this glorious chapter in Romans. I called my sermon from this section, God is for us. God is for us. It is really great news and it's a joy to be digging into these truths that grow our assurance. If you are new to this channel, you might want to go and watch the previous three videos from Romans chapter 8 just to help you to see where we've come from in this journey through this chapter. If you are new also, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with others um, so that you'll also get future notifications of videos that I'll share from the passages that I preach from. And take some time to just read this passage a few times for yourself. Look for a repetition. Uh, look for important statements that Paul makes in this section. Uh, think about the questions that he asks. There's a whole lot of rhetorical questions in this section. And spend some time praying that God would help you to understand his word so that his word would impact you, challenge you, change you so that you might be somebody who lives for God's glory alone. And as always, I'm going to just take some time to highlight some of what I've seen in this passage. In the opening verses of Romans 8, we heard the glorious news that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we saw that we've been moved from the realm of sin and death into the realm of the Spirit who gives life. And in this passage, we also see I uh, mentioned here that neither death nor life can separate us. So this continuation of, of some of the themes we saw in the earlier chapters, uh, the earlier verses at least, the ideas of, of life and death. And just as the verse one starts with that phrase, there is now no condemnation, uh, Paul says it again. Who then can condemn us? No one. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Verse 31 follows on from everything we've seen in chapter 8, but actually what we've seen in Romans so far in these eight chapters. And he says, what then shall we say in response to these things? Everything that we've seen so far, what should we say and then we see again no in all these things we are more than conquerors so in the light of everything that we've seen about the sinfulness of humanity the reality that we all stand condemned because of our sin in the light of chapter 7 the ongoing struggle against sin oh wretched man that I am as Paul says there and then what we've seen in chapter 8 so far in the light of our sin and the ongoing reality of suffering as Paul said in the previous section, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. So the reality that suffering will be ongoing, that we still have this battle against sin. He says, what then shall we say in response to these things? And then we get a whole lot of rhetorical questions. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who will bring a charge against us? Who is the one who condemns? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And Paul answers these questions in uh, the most glorious way. Just before we look at some of those answers specifically, just to see uh, some of the repetition, uh, Paul says a number of important things about the Lord God. He tells us a number of vital things about the Son of God our Lord Jesus Christ. We see over and over again in this section that the statement for us, God is for us. He gave up his son for us. The son is interceding for us. Nothing will separate us. Again, separate us. He's our Lord Jesus. It's just worth noting that repetition of uh, separate us. Who shall separate us? So this is linking verse 35 to the end as a section. So the way I saw this section dividing is the first main question 
is this uh, who can be against us and who shall separate us and obviously there's a few uh, other questions asked in between but I think those are the two big questions that Paul is is answering in this section and the focus of the answer for the second section is focusing who can separate us from the love of Christ him who loved us and the love of God so Paul is going to assure us about some wonderful truths about the love of God as I've said in every section of Romans 8 the big thing that Paul is giving us here is assurance assurance of who we are as the much loved children of God assurance of what the Spirit is doing in us as those children assurance of what Jesus has done in the past uh, how that impacts us in the present and what that will look like for us in the future so there's a past present future um, aspect of this passage and what we see in the past he who did not spare his son but gave him up for us all so that's what's happened in the past and because of that past event the cross of Christ it impacts us who are God's children in the present and it has glorious implications for us in the future and so if we look at these two main questions so the first one who can be against us Paul answers that firstly by saying God has done the greater, bigger thing already. He didn't spare his own son. He gave up his son for us. Now, if God has done that for us, to show us, to prove um, with absolute certainty that he is for us, because that's what the cross of Christ shows us. The cross of Christ shows us that God is for us. And then he's saying, if he's done that already, he will give us all things he will graciously give us all things we see this uh, this idea of all things and also if God uh, who can be against us God is for us so that means that nobody can bring charges against us they just won't stick those accusations won't stick who then is the one who condemns we saw in verse 1 we are not condemned there's no condemnation for us because of Christ Jesus and again this is linked with this past event Christ Jesus died more than that he was raised to life and because he was raised to life what we've seen already in the earlier sections uh, verse 11 and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you so that past action impacts us in the future because he was raised to life we will be raised to life and now he's at the right hand of God so in the present he's interceding for us these are absolutely astronomical truths that should grow our assurance God is for us if you take your own name you can put it in there God is for in my case David Hill Wow, that is an incredible, incredible truth. If you're a Christian, God is for you. He's proved that because he didn't spare his own son. He gave him up for us and he will graciously give us all things. No charges will stick. On that final day, when we stand before him, we will not stand condemned. In the present, we don't stand condemned because the father Jesus at the father's right hand interceding for us and then Paul asks the next big question who shall separate us from the love of Christ the answer to this is no one and nothing absolutely no one and absolutely nothing will be able to separate us and he goes through this rhetorical hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword the rhetorical answer to that is no none of those things will be able to separate us from the love of Christ then Paul quotes from Psalm 44 Psalm 44 is a psalm where God's people um, are facing suffering the irony there is they they're facing suffering not because of anything they've done wrong I mean the Old Testament story shows us God's people continually turning away from him but Psalm 44 is in a situation where they had been living his way and yet they're still facing suffering 
And so he says, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And that is the ongoing reality. It was the reality back in the days of the Psalms. It was the reality when Paul wrote this. It's the reality still today. We have an ongoing struggle against the sufferings, but those things won't be able to separate us from the love of God. So Paul then says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. So this isn't just conquerors, it's super conquerors. Through him who loved us. All of these um, words for love in this passage are uh, the Greek word agape, that love of the Father for us as his children. It's a covenant love, a deep, um, active love. And we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. He's loved us in the most extravagant way, giving up his son for us. The one who, who died and was raised again, who in love is interceding for us even now and his love for us will one day take us home. So in spite of all the hardships of life, we can know for sure, we can have assurance that in the present, we are the much loved children of God. And nothing that happens in the future will be able to separate us from that love. Neither death nor life, uh, as Paul says to the Philippians, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, it's a win-win situation for us. In the present, God is for us. In, our, in the future, God is for us. When we die, God is for us. Neither angels nor demons, so no spiritual power, neither the present, what we're going through now, or the future, what we'll face in the days ahead, neither any powers, and I think this is again spiritual powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else. Absolutely nothing, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul is assuring us of incredible things here. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God loves you. This might be something that you've heard or said, you know the reality, but just take a moment and meditate on that reality. God loves you. The God who loves you is for you. He's proved that love. He's proved that he's for you by sending his son who died for you. He's interceding for you. God is for you. God loves you. And absolutely nothing will ever be able to separate us from that love. This is incredible assurance, past, present, future. We know that God is for us. He loves us. He's proved that love in Jesus. And one day in glory, we will celebrate that love with him forever because nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ, our future holds absolutely no surprises. Glory awaits. The present holds no ultimate fears for us because God is for us. He loves us. Nothing can separate us from that love. And so we can have this assurance because in the past, God gave up his son for us to prove his love for us and nothing will ever separate us from that love. So as you dig into these verses more yourself, I pray that they will thrill your heart. I pray as you teach them to others, that others would also be greatly encouraged by God's word to us. And let's be praying that so many in our world who lack assurance will be confronted with these truths, that there is a God who is merciful and loving who sent his son and for those who are his children who have his spirit in them God is for them and nothing will be able to separate them from that love let's pray that this good news would ring out from us and would transform many more lives for God's glory's sake well God bless as you dig in further